Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And this is now part two of the uh, body where we're going to look at doing some painting. But I'm going to start off straight away with an issue. Um, and I was just going to do this off camera, but I thought, no, you, you need to see this because this is a problem you might come up against. This body has been left to air dry. And as we can see, if we look carefully, I'm going to try and make sure you can see this. But it's actually covered in watermarks. There you go, you can see it on the bonnet now. So just like the spots you get on your car after you've washed it, if you don't sham it off or anything, you can see some big ones there on the on the rear wing. You see a big one there right behind my finger. So it basically needs to be washed again. Um, and then I guess blown out with an airline because you can't go painting over that because you'll see those under the paint. Now I have actually wiped over the roof with some alcohol. Um, and that has removed the watermarks, I think. Uh, I can't be 100% sure. But in the area like here around the rear diffuser, around the front bumper, um, it's a very, very complex shape. So I want to make sure that it's all good. So I'm basically going to wash it again um, and give it a proper thorough, thorough rinse. Obviously the water is a bit hard at the moment and that's what's leaving the watermarks. So I'm going to wash it again um, and then blow it out with an airline and then we'll go from there. And uh, but then once we uh, once that's all dried and everything, we'll get masking and getting the roof painted. And here we go, washed again, and I've blown it out with an airbrush. So I think most of the water has gone. It also highlights another issue, which um, is pretty common with these Tamiya kits. And it's a bit of an issue is you can see on here on the windscreen. Um, there's a scratch. You can see it there. OK, well, if I put my finger behind it there, you can see the scratch. OK, and this is one of the problems with Tamiya packaging. What they do is they put everything in the box inside the body. So if it's all getting shaken about or moving about or whatever, if there's something sharp sticking out like a staple or an edge of a sprue or something, it will actually mark the body. Now, whether that will be visible when it's finished, I don't know, but it's definitely on the inside. Um, so there we go. Um, I know I'm touching it and I shouldn't be, but uh, I just want to see if it will actually rub off. No, it is actually a physical scratch by the look of it. So, you know, um, I might have a look at some IPA in a minute. So we're going to let that um, thoroughly dry out and then we'll start getting it all masked up, ready for, for painting the roof. Um, I also need to paint the lights. These need to be painted black. So we'll do them the same time as the roof. And these need to be sprayed silver. So uh, a little bit of variation going there. And the other thing is with these, I don't have an aerosol silver. I only have here the PC12 which is um, in a normal sort of Tamiya bottle. So this needs to be mixed up because it's probably been stood for about 15 years. And um, basically get that mixed up with some, um, it says on here, XA20, X20A. So you use their Tamiya acrylic thinners, mix with that, and then we can paint that onto those, onto those rear lights. Uh, but the rest of it is all going to be aerosol cans or rattle cans. Okay, so um, I'll... As I say, I wait for this to dry. So a couple of seconds for you, half a day for me. Okay, so the body's dried off now, and now we've got to get some masking done. So it's been left to dry off this way, so I've got any dust falling or anything, but I'll give it a quick blow out before we paint it. We'll get these lights out of the way. Uh, so for masking, there's lots and lots of different tapes. And don't, don't forget, guys, this is all for beginners. There's your Tamiya masking tapes here, which you get in these cartridges, or you can buy them in bags as refills like this. This is a Mr. Hobby one. Personally, I think I prefer the Tamiya tape to the Mr. Hobby one. Um, it just feels a bit more forgiving. I don't know. Um, probably horses for courses. This, this, the Mr. Hobby tape may well be better for this. I don't know. But um, what I'm going to do is basically mask up around the edges where we need to mask neatly. So I don't like these fold out instructions. Um, so around the rear valance, the roof and the front grille, we've got a mask around there. So I'll use the Tamiya tape or even maybe some thinner tape for going around these shapes and everything. And then for covering up the sort of majority, like you can see here where it's all covered up, rather than using this expensive tape, comparatively expensive tape, we'll just use the cheap masking tape. And we are going to have to make sure we absolutely cover everything. And also we're going to start at the bottom and work up and that way the tape will overlap this way. So when we spray, we're not spraying into the joint. If we did it this, if we start from the outside here and worked in, we'd be laying the tape this way. And if the tape lifts, the paint will get under there. Remember, this is going to be black with white going over it. So 
if you get a slight bit of tape uh, paint go through and you know the grey blodge after you spray it white and it won't look very nice at all so we've got to do this as good as we can so I'm going to get this all masked up around here I'm not going to use the window masks yet because as I said before I'm going to spray the roof spray the back spray the front and then we're going to take all the masking tape out and give it another wash in case there's any tape residue left on there so I'm going to get this masked and then I'll be back so there we go that's that all done you can see the body's all masked up the green slime you can see on there is this stuff here liquid mask uh, and I've just put it in the complex areas because as you all know masking tape doesn't like to stick to itself otherwise it wouldn't come off the roll so where you get sort of complex curves and stuff it will sort of tend to peel up and it is you know it's just a cheap rubbishy masking tape all the edging is done with the um the six mil tamiya and then the 10 mil mr hobby so um that won't lift any edges that'll be absolutely fine so i've masked it up according to the manual and if i show you here i don't know if you can see close up but what they've done if you look like, like along that strip along the edge of the roof and around that rear spoiler they've come just away from the edge so that's what i've done and the other thing i did to make life a bit easier was draw a line um on the on the outside of the body where the masking tapes go in so you can actually see where you're masking up to you can see i did it around the front as well so um yeah quite a complex bit of masking that some very very complex curves the other thing that's going to be very difficult is when we come to spray the roof um this area here this spoiler this spoiler area here we've got to try and get the paint into there so the first thing i'm going to have to do is hold the body sort of like this and get the aerosol in there with the with the aerosol touching and spray the paint sort of down into that gap uh, luckily because you're painting on the inside if we do get any sagging or runs or anything it doesn't really matter it's best to try and avoid it because you may get a thick bit of paint that will crack but um you can see now it's sort of it's all masked up and, and kind of ready to go so we shall see um i can't see any dark green under here so it looks like there wouldn't wouldn't have been any bleed through in the paint anyway but uh better safe than sorry so um that's all done as per the instructions you can see here it's horrible fold out things as you can see here, we've got the roof, the rear spoiler, the rear valance, or the splitter should I say, and the actual um, front grille done. And then when we come along later, we've got stickers that go all around the edges of everything and trim. So we cover up the, uh, the, the, the paint line, so that's a good thing. We've also got to paint these lights. The headlights are black and the rear lights are silver. And as I said before, I'm going to be using... I'll, put, I'll spray those here with the airbrush so you can see me do that so I'm going to take this out into the garage and spray um, once this uh, viejo has gone off and then um, I probably won't do any talking I'll probably put some music over it or something but you'll I'll just put the camera there so you can watch what I'm doing and um, I go from there
And there we go, as you can see, it's all done. The one thing I forgot to do was blow it out because we've got, as you can see, there's dust and stuff in the paint. But hey, that's the beauty of this. It doesn't matter because it's this we're going to see, not that. So um, there we go. I had about two or three coats. You saw me put one or two coats on. Um, just because it's black, I don't really want daylight showing through. And there are lots of little nooks and crannies everywhere, like that rear spoiler and all, this, all these bits around the front. And the headlights were a nightmare because... The trouble with aerosol cans is you can't sort of hold it back and get down in the corners like you can with an airbrush. I may actually airbrush some of that in with some ordinary black paint, we'll just see. Um, Rumour has it that as long as you have the polycarbonate paint down first, then ordinary Tamiya paint will stick on top of it. So, but I mean, they're, they're not going to get flexed and knocked about anyway. So, and if they do, then the front of the body would be completely destroyed. So I wouldn't be worried about paint flaking off. So, um... Everybody likes to see a bit of unmasking, so let's get the unmasking done. So I may just speed this up. But, um, and it's best to get the unmasking done as quick as you can because the paint, as it gets older, will go harder and it's more likely to peel. So you're more likely to, when you, when you pull the masking tape off of the edge of the paint, it's more likely to lift the paint. Whereas while the paint's still soft, it won't, it's less likely to happen. So. There we go. So we can take this masking off of here. And we need to try and avoid running our hands into any black bits because we don't want to go rubbing any of the paint off. So um, I think I'll just develop a, a pile of masking tape over there. This is the trouble with this cheap nasty masking tape. It just tears up. It doesn't sort of stay in one piece. But you can see there where that that's the liquid mask. It's like a almost like a, a layer of silicon almost, and it's um it's great because it seals in. We have got a couple of areas of bleed. We can see we've got a bit of bleed here. You can see there's some bleed under the tape there. So that's good anyway because I can show you how to cure that. Um, I think I think we can use a drop of xylene on a cotton bud or a cocktail stick or something, and that will um, take it off. But we can uh, leave that until tomorrow before we wash it. I'm going to leave this overnight. You know, these videos, they sort of, you, you watch them and they're 20 minutes long, but they're like three or four days in the making. So um, you can see here we've got masking tape residue everywhere. And this was one of my reasons for wanting to wash it. I guess we could have used the Tamiya tape. Whoops, now that's taken the film off the outside. We don't want to do that. Um, I guess we could have used the Tamiya tape all over, but uh, that would have been about five or six quid's worth of tape. So as we can see here, we've got masking tape residue in there. And as you can see there, we've actually managed to pull away the, the film. So I will put some masking tape over that so that we don't get overspray on it. Um, that was always going to be an issue as I rolled the masking tape over the edge, but... You also want to make sure we don't get any black paint on any edges anywhere so you know this this is the problem really that I've chosen white because I could you know they're opposite ends of the spectrum so anyway I'm going to shut up now speed this up and then you can just watch it with a bit of music or something Right, so that's all the uh, all the cheap stuff off, and you can see the glue that's left everywhere. You can see the residue here, 
and we'll get that off with a drop of alcohol and then we'll wash it all out as I say so it's going to be a nightmare so now we need to get these this Tamiya tape off well this is actually the Mr Hobby tape get off my hand Go careful, don't go using knives and stuff to lift the edge of the tape up and scratch in the plastic because it will show up with the get off, it will show up with the paint. So be very careful, just use your just use your fingernail or a cocktail stick or something. This is all done in little bits and pieces around here, so this could take away. You can see we've got residue there, look from the from the Tamiya tape as well. So you know, whatever you use, you're going to get the residue. Come on. And there we go. So that's it all done. As you can see, we've got glue residue everywhere. A um, little bit of tape there. So we'll get rid of all that glue residue. We'll give it another wash. We'll let it dry. And then we'll get the white on. And uh, that, that's the thing that all we do now is once it's all washed, we'll put the window mask in. And then we can um, get the white paint on. You don't have to mask the black because the white's going over the black. So you can see there we've got the black roof, black spoiler. We've got the black uh, rear split or the valance, whatever you call it. And then we've got the black grill, and you can see we've got a little bit of a little bit of a spill there, and a little bit down there. I also need to tape this up because I don't want paint getting on the outside of the body. And uh, yeah, it just needs a good little clean up now. I'm just wondering actually if I can go in there with a cocktail stick. I sellotaped up the cocktail stick because guess what? I was what happened when I was doing the arches? All the cocktail sticks fell out. So I'm not sure if I can get in there with a cocktail stick and just scratch that off. 
yeah, it's just rubbing it around. So I'll leave it till it's dried a bit harder. But um, there's our pile of masking tape we got now. Big, big pile. So that could all go in the bin. And there we go. So that's the masking done. That's the black bits done. So now I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to give it a clean and then we'll get the white done. OK, so moving forward, it's all washed and everything now and dried out. Um, as you can see, we've got the window mask cut out. Now, these window masks come on a sheet um, and you have to cut them out yourself. So they're not die cut or anything. Some they are, some they're not. I don't know how they choose which ones they do and don't. But these are a little bit awkward to cut out. But um, these big window pieces are no problem at all. Now I've fitted the side windows and the rear window. Rear window is a perfect fit, but the side windows seem to be rather large. But there's obviously going to be a reason for that. So rather than cut them down and risk having white on this side of the window, I'd rather have the risk of having clear on that side. And I can always go afterwards with some white paint. So I'm going to, it's, it's better to have it clear and touch it in with a brush than have it white inside where it's supposed to be clear if you get what I mean so um and you can see I've drawn around all the shapes so I can see where I'm going from the inside you can see on the head like there this tape here is just repairing the vinyl film that got ripped off when I did that in fact I need another piece there I'm going to do it now while I think of it or I'll forget so I'm just going to put another piece there just like so keep that covered in there we go, and then we just trim around the edges there with a knife. There we go, that's that done. Right, so you don't want any of the white paint getting on the outside of the body shell because it's a, it's a matte finish, as you can see with that, it's a fairly matte finish. So if you look on here, this is, um, let's get this bloody masking tape off my finger, go away. Go away. Right. So if you look on here, you can see Tamiya do a suggestion of cutting the centre out and putting the centre in. The trouble is, is cutting that centre out is quite difficult. So what I do is I'm going to peel away the backing from one edge, like so. OK, so just peel it back like so and then fold it. Now these masking, these window masks are brilliant because you can put them on and off time and time again. It's no... Uh, it's no big issue. So what we can do is using this side, okay, so we, as you're looking at it now, the right hand side, we can position the window mask where we want it and get it all lined up. Okay, this is really difficult to do on camera. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure the bottom edge is lined up and the side is lined up there with the edge. Okay, so that's gone down there, that's gone down there. And then this side where the adhesive is exposed, it's lining up lovely as well. So I can just push that down like that. OK, so that side's gone down. And then we can try and do this so you can see what I'm doing. We can pull the backing off and just run our fingers up and down as we go. And that will make sure, see we've got a wrinkle there now. We can take the backing right out of the way. You want to try and avoid wrinkles because that's where the paint will creep under. But sometimes they're unavoidable because if you've got a compound curve, the tape has nowhere to go, it has to wrinkle. But if you can keep the wrinkles away from the edges, that's the best thing to do. So I've got one there on the edge, so just pull that back, roll that out. Yeah, I'm going to get wrinkles everywhere now. Just gently manipulate it down so I've got wrinkles everywhere now, that's a big, big shame. So what I've done is pushed the wrinkles onto the edges. So what I shall do to cure that, I will come in with a pair of scissors, not a knife, because you don't want to score the polycarbonate. OK, so just make a cut there. Lay that piece down and then let that piece go over it. That gets rid of that wrinkle. And then on the top, I use a cocktail stick just to lift the corner. Of the Remember the other thing, guys, is this is not scale modelling. This isn't like doing your... Tammy 130 second scale Spitfire canopy. This is it's a radio controlled car, it's going to get beat up and scratched and everything. So, you know, you can go per for perfection all you want to, but at the end of the day, it's um, it's not a scale model, you don't it doesn't need to be perfect. But obviously, because we're modelers, we try and do it as good as we can. So, there we go. I mean, you can see on the other side. 
they've got it all within the black lines. Lovely. So there we go. Um, what I might do up here is just add a piece of masking tape or two because I want to make sure that I don't get any white coming between the black and the clear. So I'm just adding a couple of bits of tape in there just to take care of that. Okay. And also where we had the bleed, I've scratched all that off. And um, so that's all done. Have I got a bit of bleed there or is that a pen mark? I can see there's a little bit there. It doesn't matter. It's going to be under a sticker anyway. But uh, there we go. So we're ready to paint. Well, we're not, we're not ready to paint on white. Um, we've got to do the headlights now and the tail lights. So um, I'm going to get those done off camera because it's going to be quite awkward. And there's probably going to be some swearing involved. So I'll see you in a minute for, after I've done that. And there we go, all done. I must say these light masks, they're not the easiest masks in the world to fit, but the fit of them is beautiful. I mean, these rear lights are made in three pieces and you can see how well they've gone in and they, they absolutely fit beautifully. So the, the headlights, it's not really clear when you first look at them where this, this main mask goes, this main one over the front, but you can see that it has to come up over the top slightly. Okay, so, and then this one fills in a little bit in the side there. So make sure they're all down and we don't want any white paint getting on our clear lenses or anything. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to go over some of, some of that masking fluid again in the corners, but I, th I think it'll probably be okay. So um, we're sort of ready for paint now. Uh, I'm gonna give it a quick wipe out with a cloth with some alcohol, because I'd be, I'd be fingers in there rubbing around and everything. So I'm just gonna give it a quick wipe round with some alcohol before we, uh, before we go outside and paint it. And there we go guys, back in the house, paint's dry, doesn't smell anymore. So I'm gonna get these window masks off. Remember what I said before, best to get the masking off while the paint is still soft before it's gone hard. So don't leave it overnight. Um, and you're less likely to peel then. So I'm also gonna carefully remove this masking tape here because 
some of this has gone onto that black. Just going to make sure we don't get any peeling. And that's where it comes into play having the good degreasing sessions, sessions and giving it a really good wash and giving the paint every opportunity it can to stick. And I have seen people scour the inside of the body before. I've never tried that, I've never found I've needed to, so I haven't done it. You see here peeling away this edge, trying to peel as acutely as I can. And there we go, that's the main screen done. So we can look on there and we can see got a nice clean line around there. And we'll get this side window done. I know everybody loves to see unmasking, that's why I'm doing it. And I have noticed a couple of places where I've got bleed because I made a schoolboy error and don't ever make this mistake. What I did, that's left some, oh, that's bleeding under there. So what I did, what you should do always before you do any painting on any model where you're basking, always go around the edges and check first. And I, I didn't go around, you can see there where it's wrinkled up on that light. So we've got underneath, we've got bleeding into the light there. So it's not the end of the world, once, once we take the masking off we can just scratch the paint away. But um, I can't believe actually how much has gone wrong doing this. We've had the watermarks. Um, We've had the, uh, what other issues have we had? We've had some other issues, haven't we? I've got a bit of a bleed there a lot on that rear screen, so we'll get in there now and get rid of that. But yeah, it's just stupid mistakes I've been making. And also I think I've been making too much fuss and trying to be too good, you know, you know, treating it like a, like a 12th scale Formula One car or something from Tamiya rather than a radio controlled polycarbonate body. It's, doesn't need to be that good. So that's still a bit soft, so instead of scratching it off, it's just smearing it around. And somehow there's some got there, it's like there was a hole in it or something. <laughs> so um, there's also a little bit down there, let's just scratch that off. Yeah, we'll leave it till it's dry and scratch it off. It's uh, But um, basically, happy with that. Now we're gonna put the window frames on and see how it looks. I don't know if I'm gonna have to remove some of that paint from there. You will also notice the sharp rider mode, so I've got a couple of runs and because of the shape of this body it's been extremely difficult to paint. After you saw me doing it on the camera I took it out in the daylight and looked through the body from the inside or from the outside and if you see any areas that look a bit thin you have to go in and what was happening this area here because it's angled this area here is angled up and then it comes out so this area here had no paint in it so you have to sort of get in there with the paint and it ends up going in a bit heavy so you end up with runs and stuff so you know don't make the same mistakes I made there and you can see there you see where I haven't pushed the where I haven't pushed the the masking sticker down it's lifted and we've got paint under it under it so um we'll do that after because we can't take the light mass off yet until we've got everything else done so there we go um I kind of have to, oh I don't know, I don't know what to do here. I'm tempted to just spray the smoke on now and, and be done with it. Uh, and then I can get those light masks off. But anyway, that's going to be for part three. So that's been part two. So you can see now it's all painted. You can see we've got the white and the black roof. And um happy with how that's come out. So that there is on the surface. I think it's going to look alright. And I can see here we got, you can see where I've got a run. You can see a thicker patch of so that bonnet's going to have to be painted again I guess or just just bloody leave it because I've taken the windscreen stickers off now but um, I have actually got the windscreen masking here I could perhaps put it back on I could just mask off that whole area and then we're back into the, the realms that's the other thing I wouldn't do I wouldn't use cheap masking tape again um, I used the cheap black masking tape and it left glue everywhere and that has really caused some some hiccups along the way so uh, anyway I'm a bit disappointed there I could see I can see a thick area of white paint there, so this is obviously thin here. Hey ho, we'll deal with that. I'll see you for part three. Thanks for watching guys, bye bye.